Is that the name of the comic? What is needed for my house, like tomorrow? <laughs> Your house? The clean up for your country. <laughs> In my room needs oh, that too. Yeah, for your country. thoughts. That, that needs actually that needs Herculean clean up. That's completely different. <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Quackcast. This is the Drunk Duck Quackcast, uh, Quackcast number 434. I'm Ozone Ocean, and with me is Tan Serene. Hi, Tan. Hello. And Baines. Hi, Tan. Uh, hi, Tan. <laughs> oh, my. And, and Baines. <laughs> hi, Tan. Hello. Hello, Baines. <laughs> Great. Okay. Awesome. We have the, the, the groovy, groovy team, all of us together. So we're going to be talking about the idea of the spatial relationship of, of your characters. But not just that. It's it's like the scenes, the, the backgrounds, the areas where your characters exist. And this was a genius idea thought of by Mr. Baines in a very clever and novel way, taking the idea of toy play sets as, you know, a, a good kind of model of what you would have for your, your scenes where your characters do most of their charactering. <laughs> Where, they, where your story takes place, basically. He is, is our really right, or where parts of it do, you know, like sort of uh, important mm. moments. Like, you know, you look at a lot of the great play sets and they're mm-hmm. kind of connected to uh, important moments. It's not necessarily, this is where everything happens. Um, it's like, this is where mm-hmm. something very cool and memorable happened. That's what I found. Like when I was thinking of play sets, yeah. I was like, oh, I could, as I'm imagining play sets I would make, it's like this this cool memorable mm-hmm. thing could happen there you know and this is how i would express it in the toy but this is like why it would be awesome in the in the story in the series exactly and and it also like a place that is supposed to give itself to lend itself to to role playing basically you know mm-hmm. um, having the, the dolls there that supposedly go with the playset and reenacting certain things, or spinning new plots, yeah. all, all that kind of uh, activity that is actually very creative, but it also needs inspiration. All right, so I will do the uh, the intro to the featured comic that Kwai Degakse has given us. It's unprecedented cleanup. Unprecedented mm-hmm. cleanup. Take it away. Hello, this is Kwai Degakse, and the feature I've selected for this week is Unprecedented Cleanup by Dat Sketcher, and it is rated T for Teen. Dr. Carrick Mull has a pretty demanding day job, and he has the scars to prove it. But after a long day in the daily grind, he still has to listen to the banter of his very talkative, faceless driver. But what happens when residual, freeloading ghosts follow Dr. Mull home? He takes care of them the best way an Irish demon exorcist knows, beating the non-living dead out of them. Hopefully, Dr. Mull can finally get some rest and relaxation and a tea break that he deserves. The art is drawn digitally and in black and white full pages. Learn how Dr. Mull performs exorcisms, unless you are a ghost, and read Unprecedented Cleanup by Dat Sketcher, rated T. And that was our feature. Kwai, thank you for Unprecedented Cleanup. All right, so next up we have the featured music. Gomez has given us the theme to Outbreak, or The Outbreak. It's also called the Stumbling Dead, The Outbreak. Okay, so it's got a bit of a subtitle. I always sort of uh, think, you know, where does the subtitle go? Does it go afterwards or go before? The Outbreak, The Stumbling Dead, or <laughs> The Stumbling Dead, The Outbreak? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Either way... Well, the subtitle would go after, like, usually. But, uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Comic, that makes sense. Okay, The Outbreak, The Stumbling Dead. Baines, you have crystallized it. <laughs> Just took a bit of logic there. That's why they call me the crystallizer, Baines. <laughs> <laughs> that would be your superhero name. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, Sounds we'll... more like a like a villain name, honestly. <laughs> like a Spider-Man yeah. villain. The crystallizer. The crystallizer. <laughs> if he was a Spider-Man villain, then he would have to be attached to Spider-Man in somehow, like his teacher or his, uh, his neighbor, because Spider-Man gets all Spider-Man, well, not all. 
Spider-Man supervillains tend to be based on people that know Spider-Man and hate him. <laughs> his yeah. best friend. It's, it's <laughs> his, his best boss friend's dad. at the pizza. <laughs> it, yeah, it's his boss at the pizza parlor where he always <laughs> delivers uh, late. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, I hate that guy. Uh, mm. uh, <laughs> develop superpowers and kill him. <laughs> All right. Well. Suddenly... One one day he he was locked in the in the fridge in the walk-in fridge and uh, it happened to be at the time when uh, Doctor Octopus's uh, nuclear thing uh, exploded and he was hit by all the gamma rays in the fridge and uh, now he has crystallizing powers. Huge and, and... ice, awesome! <laughs> and he's not like Doctor Freeze either. This is a different crystallizing ice. Powder. Yes, it's totally different all right yes <laughs> he turns he doesn't freeze people he turns people's uh liquids into crystal so you have to pass a million kidney stones oh my lord <laughs> <laughs> he gives you well, this pretty devastating villain actually he, he ruins your urethra basically yeah oh god <laughs> all right so so anyway this uh music that gum wallace has given us it's um <laughs> Get your cowboy boots on. Get your jeans and your hat. Oh, I'll sort it out for some boot scooting in the dry, dusty ground. This country theme tune stumbles and skips along while sipping whiskey and chewing a chunk of beef jerky. Get up and dance. The music is a calling you. Okay, so take it away, Gum Wallace, with the Stumbling Dead. Woohoo! All right. the music by gum wallace the outbreak the stumbling dead all right obviously a bit of a zombie theme there okay the quack cast a play sets bane's play sets so yes i'm sorry to ask you this again because we've already done it for the video and we did it really well like we people can see mm-hmm. <laughs> totally naked bane's, oh. was very, bane's was extremely verbose <laughs> That's probably the most I've ever talked on the on the video cast. I think I dominated. Yeah, yeah. It was it was awesome. Well, finally, a subject that matters came up: toys. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it means something. Okay, so Baines, tell yeah. us how did you come up with this whole idea? Well, I'll I'll do my kind of version, so I'll let you be able to demolish it. That way, you we have some uh, conflict. Uh, so, um, so the way I sort of took it from was when I was sort of reading it, um, I was thinking, um, oh yeah, where do my characters exist in the world? When I try and think of where my damn characters exist, my brain shuts down because it's just too damn complicated. Because I'm a literal thinker, I think about not only where my characters exist, but why they exist there. And you know, uh, my characters in this room, 
other characters in that room how do they get to from this room to that room they must go down a corridor or what is in the room that they're in like you know there's a toilet over there there's a bed here there's this there's that Mm -hmm. why are there those things in this room in in this house in this town you know what what is the history behind the objects in this and so my brain just just goes like full on autistic right. um super complicated but Baines you have a solution to all this with a set of steak um, knives well that stuff is <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah that stuff is i mean because you're drawing everything there's more wisdom there's no wisdom to that to in, it. in a way it's it's overkill though yeah yeah it is for it's sure. stupid I, I know what you mean though you know um, I've I've tried to do similar things, and I, I'm the complete opposite in the way I think. Of course, I'm very sort of vague and kind of fuzzy in the brain and stuff like that. But um, I, I have tried to do it. Like I'll be designing a, 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 a shuttlecraft or something for a science fiction. I'm like, okay, well, it's a long distance like shuttlecraft. So like, are there beds? Is there a bathroom? Where's the bathroom? Like, how mm-hmm. does it work? How much space do we need for this thing? What if there's three people? Is there only one bed? You know, it's like, how would it, but I want to keep it small, you know, but I also want it to be like doable because, you know, I got to pee every 15 minutes. How would I do it? If I had to fly this thing, like, how does that even work, you know? But uh, so I have done that. This is more like um, you have specific areas in the world of your story or series, and it can be, and you can figure out stuff specific cool things that happen not like he has to walk out the door and down the hallway because who cares about that you know yeah it's like in this specific location how do things work or like how is this setting alive how is why does it matter you know like what what goes on here how does it yeah it's like sort of like what's special about this place Mm -hmm. and to, to give you some kind of life to a certain scene and it was i'll say it again like i did on the video inspired by the these muppets uh, play sets hmm. they had and that show was like a variety show you had the behind the scenes kind of stuff and then it would go to different uh, performances you know so you'd have completely different sets you had a starship set which really this maybe is what really caught my eye because it was uh yeah. i'm working on this uh, sci-fi idea so it's like oh that's a cool actually that's a cool looking set and these play sets are really accurate to what the show looked like mm-hmm. so i got really excited by that i was like man if i like what would my what kind of play sets would i make you know like you'd have the starship with this figure included you'd mm-hmm. have the you know blank with the, the flying car with this this sort of aspect to it and i was do, working on the flying car i was like oh and you would have this thing like you open the back and this thing comes out because this is going to happen in a scene in, in my thing that i'm working yeah. on so the, you just think of specific things, cool things that'll happen. And um, that's a good use of play sets. Like you're like, okay, something really awesome is going to happen. And therefore it would make a great play set. You know, what would the play set be? And then you could just figure out, it, it's a way of figuring out specifics for that little corner of your world in mm-hmm. your story. Mm-hmm. Not the whole thing, the whole thing. You need some vagueness. I think you need to, cause you need to be able to cut past the boring parts and you need room to build other stuff if you want to later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need that. Yeah. So that yeah. vagueness to fit in, like, oh, there's uh, maybe a public library. We need that for this moment. We need a exactly. Dock. We need a warehouse. We need. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Industrial area. Yeah. I mean, I had certain things. I had the outside of a building with a little catwalk, like you have on some motels. You know, like you have a thing that people walk down and the stairs. You go, okay, I have something that important that happens there uh, i also have a lab like muppets had muppet labs my story is mm-hmm. going to have a lab my thing is based on the muppets we <laughs> look nothing like it but muppets it's space. based on the muppets. yeah exactly <laughs> i haven't seen that one actually yet Jeez. but um yeah. yeah so that was the basic idea and i spent the i spent like a couple hours like just sort of scribbling down ideas for play sets and what figures it would come with and it was really fun huh. Uh, when it got more vague, I was like, oh, and there'd be a giant play set would cost a thousand dollars for the whole like campus or, you know, sort of facility where my thing is set. That's mm. less interesting. That's getting away from the point, yeah. actually, because it's not 
it doesn't have specific things, unless it does, unless you have a corner of the campus and it's got this important thing, this important thing, that important thing. Um, like I mentioned, the, the old Death Star playset that had a had the bridge that mm. broke away where Luke swung. It had the trash compactor area with the monster where, where that stuff happened. and had like specific little things that were important and interesting. The in the shuttle movie. bay you, where you have the fight between them. Darth Vader and Obi Wan Kenobi kind of thing, you know. Right? Yeah, exactly. So you'd have certain uh, things that mattered, and uh, yeah. I was thinking also that um, it is very important to to have a good feel of the of the as you said of the of the scene of the place where your particular scene is taking place because. You have to know that where your characters are going to run to, or where they're going to hide, or where they are going to do certain things. And then um, I actually had my place set, set because it is uh, set, uh, set in Athens, and I have made it a point, at least in, in the outdoor scenes who actually have gone to the area where it's taking place and take all sorts of photos <laughs> to have the, the whole idea of how the space works in 3D, more or less. Mm. Um, and, and that's a, another reason why a good big part of what is happening in Athens takes place in Plata because it, is a, it has remained unchanged since I don't know 1930s since the and even earlier like end of the century and onwards it hasn't really changed much so uh, actually the areas where they would have been in the 40s are still there and they are in that. and and that's how I I handled a lot of things but I don't know if you could turn um, anything any scene from without moonlight into a commercial place, like it would be right. <laughs> super awkward. Like, how would you even have an advertiser sort of thing? Like, we have a place set for this Nazi atrocity, and then for that, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, figures not included. Buy your own uh, stuff of NSS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, of course, by the resistance figurines, uh, and some of them come packaged as dead people, <laughs> dead <Yeah>. bodies. <laughs> dead bodies not included. Well, you and could... each playset comes with a limb or a body part for Hitler. Oh, so you collect them all, and yes. you can assemble <laughs> an extra figure. Uh, last piece is a mustache. Yeah, Put that on there. <laughs> that's right. You know, oh, it's <laughs> well, you you could have wow. like the the room with the barrels. Okay, so that's that's a great fun room. Yes, so you get the room with the barrels yes, with the beds in. Be maybe easily the most funnest place because it has all <laughs> sorts of. of uh, first of all, it okay, it, it ends ignominiously, but um, until it got raided, it had all these uh, secret idols and stuff and it is actually a true story and so you would have the trap door that leads to the other exit and because it had two exits and yeah. uh, all the barrels and, and stuff that that would be fun exactly would... you gotta Good. just pick those and ignore all the bad ones I can monetize that one right? <laughs> no <laughs> I always have the fun ones, like the secret rooms in the church and stuff like that. That's what we'll do. Yeah. Let's go for the fun. Yeah, yeah the church actually also has secret rooms in it yeah. because uh, it is a very old church and certain parts of it that are not in use anymore are also not directly visible. So I'm hoping that soon that will become apparent soon. <laughs> well... When you start selling those play sets, yes. <laughs> we will uh, yes, be able yes. to use them. <laughs> It'll all become uh, uh, out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, some 
I think some IPs do not offer themselves to presets as easily. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, yeah, quite a lot. I don't think my series does either, really. I had trouble. It, it just didn't feel cool to me to think of typical strange playsets. I, I what did. What the hell? Uh, I typical strange is easy. I might be wrong. No, I think, I think, yeah. I think typical strange so? is perfect. That's the oh, best okay. one, apart from Bottomless Waitress. I mean, that's just. <laughs> well, the diner, yeah. That would be cool. Bottomless <laughs> Waitress is No, uh, what's the other one? Uh, G fifteen at least. Yeah, right. I mean, that yeah. that works yeah. because the ladies are always like, you know, it's teasing. So it's everything would be com- like, you know, those aprons would be painted on. Basically, you can't you can't remove those. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, in bottom of switches you have the diner and you have like different places in the diner. So we have. Like, <laughs> and a bolus just does not work as a real at the moment it does not work as like a crystallized um building where you have you know the restaurant and like the back of the restaurant and the toilets and you know whatever else because it, it's it's basically drawn as whatever fits so you have to have separate areas so we have we would have like the the counter area and that would be a playset by itself. And then you have like the tables, and they would be a separate playset. And then the the break room, which is a separate playset completely. <laughs> you would not have an entire diner. That's yeah. just no. Right. <laughs> I'm afraid. Yeah. That I, 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 that's... You have like the storeroom where the cupboard opens and the pancake batter thing falls on Polly. Exactly. From way back early in Bottomless Witcher. It's, yeah. it's, it's more like the TARDIS. It just gets huger and bigger and spreading out. Right. Exactly. Just, just... I, can, I can see uh, the fact that the figure of Greg, Greg, of Greg uh, being like packaged together with his broom. And, and he, <laughs> exactly. And he's in a towel or something, whatever it was that he was holding originally. Oh, yeah. That... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Polly gets like a, a pot of coffee or something, and yeah, Francis, you'll pack get a her... cigarette. Yeah, pack of cigarettes is yeah. Polly's. Yeah, Francis might have a um, yeah pot of coffee, and Jane has her thing. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Jane <laughs> has a spork. A spork? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so Francis yeah. has a spork. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Oh, Francis. Yes, Francis. Sorry, that's Francis it. had this. <laughs> that's that's it. Yeah, you have your your individual uh, things. So, what would 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 Fotis have as his little yeah. thing? Pack a microfilm. The microfilm. <laughs> he gets the microfilm. <laughs> It'll be cool, I man. He'll <laughs> he... <laughs> get a huge <laughs> block of molded plastic chocolate to hold. Yeah. You know, realistic <laughs> grip. <laughs> uh, yeah, Fotis would have that. Um, yeah. Exactly. I don't know. I mean, anyone else, uh, all macabre stuff, like uh, diameters, I guess, would have the chair, chair leg. <laughs> That's not a good oh, thing. Oh, God. Yeah, a bloody chair <laughs> leg, like Negan from The Walking Dead. Um, there's, uh, yeah, um, Oh, what's her name? The sniper. Um, Martha. Martha, yeah. So she's got a big sniper rifle. That's her thing. She yes, yes, that. yes, yes. And cigarettes. <laughs> and cigarettes. Yeah. They all get cigarettes. That's just the, the yeah. default. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they all get a pack, except Fotis. <laughs> he sneaks them. <laughs> <laughs> he does start smoking, but not, not yet. Oh, for a right. oh geez. <laughs> and so yeah, so Oscar he would have like a bait from Tigger Strange, of course. He had like a videotape. Yeah, know. exactly. Videotape, cup of uh, coffee cup. Ah. Um, maybe give him a TV. <laughs> give him a whole yeah. bedroom. <laughs> strange. Behind the counter. <laughs> oh, uh, TK pack of cigarettes and uh Guitar probably because TK plays guitar. Ah. Uh, Abigail, I would have the, the hair in the bun that snaps off, and you can put on the hair down. Oh yeah, so the two styles. You know? 
Very yeah. clever. I love that. She um, can remove her glasses. Yeah. yeah. That's genius. That'd be really fun. Actually, those would be neat figures, like uh, for collectors' items. All of this. Yes. Well. Oh man. Yeah. I, if yeah. I for if Pinky. I could do it, they would already be paid. <laughs> Like for Pinky, there would be I like. I can pay someone to make them. You can actually, you can, if you got the money, you can get them. You can pay for figures, and people have done that from web comics. So that is a thing that happens. That actually I'll have to look into happen. it. The custom figures I've seen look bad. I would want them to look awesome. Oh, yeah, I've, I've got a custom figure actually here. It's not. This is... stop it. No, I'm. Oh, not for Pinky. This is. Uh, you guys can okay. see it, but the. The people on uh, listening can't. So this figure here, um, this is from a comic that was on Drunk Duck. Uh, the, no the author of um, what was it called? Uh, SXD. Damn it, I can't remember the name. Anyway, the the author is called Juno Blair. Starcross Destiny. That's it. Oh, um, she okay. She had this figure made cool. of her main character, this is Juno. Actually... And this is from a webcomic. That's awesome. There you are. So it does yeah. happen. It exists. I'll, I'll do. Okay. If I remember, I'll, I'll make a fit. And she has a, a an accessory. Little staff here. Made out Ooh. of metal. <laughs> so Nice, man. It, it exists. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'll, I'll do a photo That's of awesome. that for the, uh, the Drunk Duck. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. There you are. <laughs> It exists in real life. I was, I was, I actually have had been approached by people who want to do a figure of Pinky TA. You know, so you know, you, I would be paying for it, of course, but they right. were willing to do that. Yeah. And at that stage, I just wasn't really like in a position to do it. But yeah, I would these days. I would consider it. So for Pinky, I would have like, uh, like three different Pinkies. Like there would be Pinky in her, like a. Uh, her typical stylish, um, sexy outfit. Pinky all rugged up in her coats, you know, yeah. with her winter hat. And dance Pinky, so she have a green dress on or something like this. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, cool. That's another thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd have yeah. that. <laughs> uh, like I, I would probably need also two photos, at least one before and one after uh, he got basically cracked. So oh, yeah. like pure one child when, fortress. Yes, the child the child like happy and ridiculously optimistic uh, one. And the other one that is more ragged and frowns all the time for now. Heroic fortress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With his scar and everything like that. Yeah. Yeah, and and uh, he would probably get his his uh, layered, scra- uh, scruffy, um, you know, winter look with a with this um, very resistance coat that he has now. He will have in this job um, and everything. Yeah. <laughs> he would have a for that figure, he would also have a rifle that, uh, or, a, or a gun of some sort. I don't know. I will see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love these ideas. Very, very <laughs> cool. Very fun. All right, let, let's. Get... Yeah, so fun. And very addictive. Already. Very addictive. Well, let's get back to the uh, the play set. Well, it's a scene thing. Um. So this this idea does exist. I mean, obviously, we're talking about like you know we're using playsets in order to kind of um, approach the idea, but this is what they do in every uh, sitcom, in every well, in movies as well. You have particular places where scenes take place, but movies you only use it once, so it's not the same thing as like comics and stuff like that. But so uh, for sitcoms and dramas and stuff like that, you have scene sets, so they have to build physically. And you're going to reuse. And uh-huh. they don't have unlimited money, so they can't make everything. So they slim the story down to happen in these particular nodes of, you know, where 
drama should happen where drama can really work where the characters can really do stuff and you know live and and you could have you know big dramatic interesting things happening not only do the things lend themselves to that because you know um they're exciting or or there's interesting things in them they also can fit multiple characters and be very easy to shoot from so if we're talking about like a you know a sitcom kind of thing it's a, it's a flat stage basically there's not too too many angles you're going to shoot it from you know there's always going to be yeah. like the the open the fourth wall that's what we have in comics yeah the couch is facing it in a sitcom it's not 360 degrees basically exactly yeah like 270 degrees or whatever these days it's a bit more complicated but yeah in the old days it was 180 degree kind of set <laughs> right but yeah, so so that's that's what you've got in in the real world, you know, in for movies and TV shows, which is a great analog for comics because they're a visual medium. And yeah, you we don't show the necessarily show the train that you used to take to get there. We don't show the you know the corridors and back alleyways and uh, taxi cabs and all this kind of stuff. We we just pick. And we limit it down and we leave everything else to, to the imagination for the audience to interpolate between here and there. And there because you don't need to show every yes. single little linear Unless step. the train is important, unless something actually yep. happens there. Um, definitely a lot of cool stuff could happen on a train, you know? Oh, it can. You could have your uh, train play set, depending on what your story is. But yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's like, yeah. If that's just your transition to your important sets, then you don't use it. Exactly. You don't want to invest money in in terms of a sitcom or a TV show. You don't want to invest oh, money right. in things that aren't going to really pay off. If it's yeah. just going to be something that's used for one or two two scenes, well, yeah, maybe we could hire a real train. <laughs> we could just go down to the train set, <laughs> the, the train set, the set of the train that all these other shows use, and we'll just use that. Or if we're a multi million dollar show like Seinfeld, well, sure, we can just build something for a it's not a big deal for something like that, but you know, I'm getting off the, the thing here, but uh, <laughs> for most of us, so we're doing a, a comic stuff like that. Um, we've only got so much time and energy to invest in what we're doing. <laughs> um, and it's a lot of work to even mentally. It's a lot of work to think up, you know, new scenes for every bloody thing that happens. We can do it. Sure. But it, it can be a bit of a waste of our time and energy to do that so it is it does make a lot of sense to think in terms of play sets and to think in terms of sets and just you know come up with these specific areas yeah logically like, like once again like the, the area where important stuff happens exactly or the the areas yeah so yeah yeah so everything like the bedroom so certain things happen in, in a bedroom uh, if you're thinking in terms of your like your house where you live, you know, or apartment or whatever, you the exciting things that happen are not going to tend to be like you know the toilet. I mean, we we're, we're not going to think of a lot of fun stories that happen around toilets generally. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we we'll, we'll just ignore that area. Um, yeah, uh, hallways and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not that exciting. It's a transitionary spot. Okay, so we're looking at family rooms. You know, the area in front of the TV. Maybe a lot of stuff happens there. Maybe, you know, if you're a creative person, it's a studio or a workshop. You know, those are the kind of spots. Like the breakfast table, stuff like this, where people tend to meet and gather. So you have a bit of, you know, uh, that back and forth. So that's that's a good way of looking at it. So you can, you can pick spots that have multiple characters interacting not only is it like spatially where multiple characters can interact, there's a reason for multiple characters interacting. So we, we pick, yeah, the, uh, the TV, the family room where the TV is, we pick the, the kitchen, you know, stuff like that. So that makes sense to pick those as your main spots. Mm -hmm. If you're, des if you're, you know, designing a web comic or whatever, pick it based on that. Don't be silly and pick a locations that, not a bunch of stuff is going to happen where you won't reuse now in Bottomless Waitress 
we're working together slowly on that comic and we we have specific locations around the diner where things happen so the diner is our main location we haven't really gone anywhere else mm-hmm. and we have like the back of the diner so that is a specific spot where stuff has happened yeah. we have mm-hmm. the front of the diner but we only see that as an external location so nothing actually happened at the front of the diner yet we have yeah. the the tables <laughs> The front of the diner, though, you don't actually need to have it as a place. You could have things that exist outside the diner, like uh, the truck. I, I forget your name. Um, truck driver. Oh, uh, uh, Nikki. Oh, yeah. Nikki. yeah. So you could, uh, you know, have a, a model of the truck that can be parked outside the diner. So the outside doesn't actually need to be part of the place. Is wherever you set the actual diner, so you have the outside, and then you also position the the trucks outside. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. Somewhere to park Nikki's truck. Oh yes. god, Nikki would That's be right. a great um, a great toy to make, and her Action truck. Figure, yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah, stick her in her truck, <laughs> drive her around. Yeah. yeah. We have our garbage area play set. We have the, <laughs> one of the, like you have the dumpster and the tags of garbage. A dumpster that comes with the, the little, bird uh, sisters sticking out of it. Exactly. Like Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> you open the, the lid and there they are. Yeah. Close that lid. You let the, the stank out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, with realistic and their their um accoutrements or uh, accessories would be like uh, fish bones and uh, exactly yeah they have that banana skins so, yeah <laughs> you put it on our head put it on our head put it any yeah. way you want <laughs> I love those characters I absolutely love them but just thinking yeah. of things in terms of play sets it helps. Uh, yeah, crystallize it in your in your brain a bit more, and um, think of things in in a fun way, but also in a clever spatial way. Because yeah, and I mean you can well, the alternative to this, or I'm um, sorry, but uh, you you can like three D build these things instead of oh, actually oh yes, you know this is obvious you know you like develop these. I did that with the my typical strange video store. I have a three D build oh awesome of pretty much the whole. Well, I mean, sort of the counter area and behind it, and then a whole bunch of uh, you know DVD shelves, and a kind of a layout um, support beams. So it's I and I use it in the comic for backgrounds, so I can mm. get in there and like sort of flip it all around and find a good background. Yeah. Um, even though it's not a three D comic, like they, they do make for like pretty nice looking backgrounds. Huh. And. Uh, the, the, yeah, and you can sort of see some spatial relationships. I haven't really used it in that way, or used it in the idea of like, okay, well, in the counter, you can hide underneath the counter. I can open the cupboard and like hide down there. I haven't done that much. Uh, Penelope hides in a cabinet in, in my first issue, I think. So, I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, this this cool stuff, like cool playset stuff that you could, I could think about. Um, That's but yeah, really like a 3D creative. build or a map or like just a blueprint of your important rooms and stuff, where stuff yeah. is, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's great. Exactly. So a lot of people have done that. Um, yes. Uh, someone commented on the um, – uh, Riley McCool commented on the fa- our, your the Facebook post about your story that um, – oh, the, the guy who does uh, Magical Misfits – Ronald, um, I can't remember his drunk duck name, but yeah, Ronald. Um, he created that. He created a three D version of his uh, his world, and yeah, exactly the same kind of thing, which helps him, you know, know where things are spatially, but also create interesting scenes based on areas that he actually knows what they look like, which. You know, when when you come down to it, you, say if you're drawing a scene, it really helps to know the spatial relationship, even just in a room that you've got, where 
two characters are within oh there's actually a door behind them oh that can create an interesting scene or you know that can indicate the, that people are can go somewhere else from this space or maybe there's a table between the characters like Terence, when you showed all your um collab not collaborators that's a wrong term when you showed all your resistance members getting together and mm, yeah you you have them having particular spatial relationships because not only have you got like them in a room or around a table you've got okay so this person is next to this person who's opposite this person so you've got yeah that it, uh, yeah absolutely and and that is uh, also often it can be a puzzle in the sense that you want, like I had have you know I don't know how many articles ago I had written about the table scene that the table scene all all always shows relationships between characters. Um, so you have to you have to figure out where everyone stands and why they would have gravitated to that position. Mm. Uh, that and that the a place around the table. So yeah, the that's why the biggest, the ones that are uh, uh, at the highest level of the class, they are on either side of the head of the table, uh, as far away from each other as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and then then you have uh, the one in the middle. Is the one that stands exactly on equal distance, um, also in terms of ideology, both, and yeah, you go from there. Yeah, which is it's incredibly interesting. Yeah, there's symbolism to where people mm. are. Yeah, but also like for story elements. So if you want to have someone, um, you know, like an argument on the table, it doesn't work for two people to have arguments when they're sitting next to each other. It's difficult. Yeah. So you've got to, you really got to have them <laughs> sort of opposite each other in some sort of, yeah, even diagonally. Unless you want, unless you want them to be physical. Yeah. Quickly. If you want them to be so, physical, then you don't want a table in the way. So yeah. You want it. And if, if they do get physical, they will naturally turn toward each other. So... Yeah. Sitting next to each other doesn't matter all the time. Yeah, or one person in between. You've, yeah. you've got to have a bit of closeness somehow, or a very small table. <laughs> Tables, they can't be too big. Table, that's that's an interesting thing. If you've got a big group of people um, and you think, oh, yeah, I'm going to have this massive meeting with all these people, they need a massive table. Now, that absolutely doesn't work you have to really think carefully because if you've got a massive table you have to have a massive room for it to be in which is oh yeah now uh they're like in a huge hall no it's, it, it doesn't work um say even for like king arthur and the round table now we all like that story king arthur and the round table it has you know it resonates with us oh yeah everyone's equal blah 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 now if you have a massive round table um that's going to take a hell of a lot of room. What what do you have underneath this huge freaking round <laughs> table? Because that's the biggest area you can take is a circle. That's where they are hiding. <laughs> yeah. It's just it's not like the, it's like a roofed space. So, you know, what is underneath? So the way people come up with it is saying, okay, so it's a round table, but it has a hole in the middle. So, yeah, hmm. stuff. Can, so you've got that kind of... Uh, Weird stuff to think about. Or, or, you know, or you could just reserve the round table for only the characters that you know are going to interact around the round table. Like, you don't need to have a gazillion night. <laughs> yes, exactly. Right. 300 meter wide table. <laughs> yeah. You don't actually need that. <laughs> no, it's, it's like a card table. It's really tiny. That's the real round yeah. table. It's like a coffee table. So we have like 10, like, like four people around it. Actually, if you have like a, a, a standard round table, which isn't really all that big, will fit anywhere from <laughs> six to ten people around. Yeah, it's so not bad. each yeah. person has one one single arm, and they're all like standing. They're all stacked yeah. around in a circle. So we've Actually, got back to back. 
you are joking, but it's it's actually it would work if you have the round table be higher than a, a normal table, and they come to it, and they are all standing, and it's more like a, like a podium sort of thing where they are there to, to speak. They have to approach it uh, to speak, and it's very easy for them to be very animated around the round table because uh, they are standing. They are probably there to discuss something that is hidden for whatever reason, and yeah. can have all sorts of neat interactions. <laughs> it could. There are yeah, there are sure. ways to make it work. Mm. Are, are but ways. yeah, don't, and, and and that's another thing in the scene. Unless you are having this. Battle Royale, don't put too many characters into one scene. You will not be able to keep track of them all and what they are doing. It's going to be too busy to follow. Yeah. I think up to, up to six, the, the, the scene I have ever written with the most characters, and that's uh, actually now makes me laugh, uh, it, it involved 12 characters. It's from my my novels, and they were all forced to squeeze around a tiny table. <laughs> they didn't have they had this small table, and they had to use it because uh, it was a war council, and they had to put a map of it. And even the map was too big for this stupid table. So, so they were everyone was constantly frustrated from the get go because the table was too small, and they were too many people. Mm. Hell to write. <laughs> had to actually make a model. Speaking of play sets, had to make wow. a sketch, a sketch of uh, of uh, where everyone was sitting, who would see what of the map, and and uh, yeah, eventually, of course, the table uh, was ignored. They all fought anyway. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but the idea is that it, it is extremely hard to write. Extremely yeah. hard to write. have more like yeah. five characters in it. And um, draw as well. Oh, would be hell. I, 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 I refuse to draw that scene. That scene is hell. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes sense, to, yeah, when you're making your playset to limit them down generally hmm. so you can <laughs> funnel things in a bit more and make them, yeah, simplify streamline although that said pinky ta features ridiculously huge areas just massive and yeah i've i run into the the problem where everything is like very fuzzy very fuzzy so i have like a massive workroom shed that has all sorts of things and just the relation, the physical relationship of the things within that shed, like uh, you know, uh, drill presses and lathes and um, yeah, cranes and stuff like this that you need in a workshop, that they're not going to be in the same position ever again. <laughs> That's just like that for that scene because I cannot remember and or think about those things in in a proper way. So that would yeah. just I, I think uh, you should probably create some. I I could never do that. I don't even have the program for it. Assuming that uh, you are a serious artist like us, <laughs> uh, you can take a 3D model and rotate it uh, whenever you need it so that you can then just recreate where everything is for every panel so it is consistent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if, if you're properly serious, like I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not serious... And uh, you just uh, don't speak about it again and hope nobody notices. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We must never speak of this again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're, we're up to about an hour, our, our level. So thank you guys for being the, the bones and the, the sets and the play sets of the Quack cast. Thank you. No, no you. you're not the play sets. You, you're the action figures within yeah. the, the play set yeah. of the Quack cast. There we are. So there's... That would be an interesting play set. Tance with her, her action action rifle. 
or <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I, I wouldn't have an action rifle. I would come together with a laptop. A laptop. And a cup of coffee. Oh, laptop, cup mm-hmm. of coffee, and cigarillos. Yes. So, there, Baines, what about your action uh, accessories? Well, I don't know what accessories I would have, but the Baines figure comes with uh, with stuttering action. Stuttering action. Real yes. action stuttering action. That's right. The, the Ozone figure comes with multiple outfits. You can dress him in like a Barbie doll. <laughs> yes. And, and hair that you can brush. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's me. All right. Thank you guys for listening to Quackcast, the Quackcast number four hundred and thirty-four. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.